Rick Dyer at home in Lucadia, a man whose mind is light years in the future. His past success, the invention of Dragon's Lair, Space Ace, and Thayer's Quest, the latter hooked into a human-like computer called Halcyon. Good evening, Hal. What do you want, Rick? In limited production now out of Carlsbad, Halcyon will have an optional conversational computer control. It takes remote control out of your hands and into your mouth. Elevator music. Louder. Classical. Disco. Maybe he's what a computer should have been all along, something that, pe that anybody can use because anybody can talk. The cost of the computer, $1,800, $1,100 if you own a laser disc. The talkback feature is an extra $300. Eight. Other advances, an infrared control for your exercycle that hooks up to the computer and lets you pedal among the planets. If you want it down to earth, there's a stroll in the English countryside or in Beverly Hills. There's a helicopter game, again, controlled with voice commands. Level one. Yes. Yes. The outer limits of Rick Dyer. Few of us understand his orbit, but every so often we know when he's returned to Earth to reveal the next video generation. John Kalia, News 8. Visit worlds which were only dreams before Halcyon, like nothing you have experienced ever. A room full of people talking to computers and computers talking back to people. This is RDI, the company that gave us Dragon's Lair, Space Ace, and now Halcyon, the first interactive video adventure. 25,000 units are the sales estimate for the first year. Only one or two units are in selected video stores now, just one in San Diego County. Each unit is being tested by computers, equipment, and humans. Quality control to ensure satisfaction for the $2,500 price tag. The game that comes with this is Thayer's Quest. You've seen stories on that before. The new twist will be a disc for a football game. For the first time for the players that, that have always been watching football and saying, gosh darn it, why didn't they do that? Why didn't they throw a pass? Well, well, you're going to literally get to be the armchair quarterback and make the plays for, the, for your favorite team. The Chargers Raiders are in action here. Dallas and Washington is another selection. This Charger edition is not the current last place dud, but the team with the likes of John Jefferson. Bomb. Oh, boy. Bomb versus Doug Tatum. Back pedaling to throw. Set, run, move to his right, gets a rush, gets hit, throws deep. No good, nobody there. Halcyon has broader horizons than just games. Dyer says those stores with allocations have already pre-sold the units. Part of a dream come true game plan. This is what I'm talking about isn't isn't uh, the future, it's here, it's today. John Kalia, News 8. Tomorrow, something from Rick Dyer so secret we can't reveal its name. It won't be released until June, but you'll have the first public look in our final report. John Kalia, News 8. There's a real pigeon in there. <laughs> Inside this box is a carrier pigeon. The person who sent it wants a job interview with Rick Dyer. I have never seen anything like this in my life. People want to work for Dyer and his wife, Jan, because their company has the video game industry following their lead. Dragon's Lair, the fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. Dyer invented and produced the laser video game Dragon's Lair. He just introduced the follow-up, Space Ace, that promises to duplicate the financial bonanza of Dragon's Lair, which had $30 million in sales in 40 days. The industry now finds itself wondering what will come next. In June, they'll find out. This is a story about greed, about unbridled ambition and power lust, and the disaster resulting from those faults. It's a computerized home laser video game so secret we can't reveal its name. But Dyer allowed us inside his Carlsbad headquarters for enough of a look that indicates the video game industry hasn't seen anything yet. 
For starters, the computer for the game is compared to the one in the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. It's like a living entity more than it is a machine. It also has uh, what we call artificial intelligence, which is the machine's ability to learn. It knows what your strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, as he talks to you about the events, you see them flowing through, hmm. through the crystal. Hmm. Not much is remembered of those times, but the empty castles, the fallen temples, the lost grandeur of their cities haunt our legends. To give you an idea of how labor-intensive animation is, is that as many as 24 of these cells are put on and shot individually every second. What we're creating is going to allow you to be anything that you ever wanted to be and experience it. You're going you're to be there. You will live and die by your decisions. <laughs> Dyer is as unassuming as he is brilliant. Several times he caught himself telling us too much, a bit like a father bubbling over about a newborn child. I'm being awfully trusting. I, I guess I haven't had enough media exposure. I haven't been burned yet. As far as Hollywood's concerned, Hollywood doesn't know we exist. You know, that's the way we'd like to keep it. The atmosphere reflects Dyer's quiet confidence. People here seem unaffected despite being involved with the project that will likely set the industry on its collective video ear. His employees have varied backgrounds. Before coming here, Don Bennett worked on interior design for Boeing aircraft. Uh, much different than this, but not near as much fun. <laughs> Dyer's background is engineering, not art, but around the artists, he still knows what he wants. It would be nice if you could make that, that um, shadow yeah. stronger. Yeah. The writing, art, engineering, and mechanical departments are all under one roof. Half the building is empty, for now. In June, this warehouse will come to life. The new home video system that Rick and Jan Dyer have banked everything on will be shipped from here. And if test marketing is any indication, what they will have is your basic phenomenal success. Dyer's research indicates once people play the new game, they'll be hooked. The average sitting time is three hours. These are rough sketches set to motion. We're estimating that you'll be able to play the game 20 hours a week for six months before you will have explored the, the entire world. Unlike standard video games that demand quick reflexes, the new project places a premium on thinking. You talk to the computer, and it will talk back. Uh, the computer will say, uh, John, did you, did you just go to get a snack? And you would say, yes. You'd be kind of surprised. And it would say, well, I would appreciate in the future if you would excuse yourself before walking off on me. And that's a feature that's actually in the system. The cost of the game is still secret, but we're told a standard color TV is all that's needed once you buy the game. We're pioneers. We're doing something that's never been done. We have artists, we have writers, we have engineers. We have technicians, they're all working together and that has never existed before. There's never really been a reason for those three groups to all coexist simultaneously. They, they, what we're really doing is combining art with science. My wife and I, as you probably can guess, are gambling everything we own on this. So it's, it's kind of scary, but it, that's the sort of thing that makes you want to succeed. Dyer recalls another person starting that way, a man who had everything under one roof and did pretty well. His name was Walt Disney. John Kalia, News 8.